Next, we're going to look at how to differentiate non-polynomials. And what we mean by that is basically any other type of function. So it could be a trig function, it could be an exponential, it could be a log. Um, just not an x squared or an x cubed or a root x. Okay. So first, let's start by looking at the sine function. Okay, so I've drawn the graph for sine x, we should be familiar with this, uh, within radians. And I want to think about what the gradients of that graph look like. Okay, so a couple of key points we could start with. Uh, let's look at pi over 2. So the original graph of pi over 2, we can see that the gradient would be 0 to stationary point, isn't it? So if I think about this new graph, which tells me about the gradient for this graph, pi over 2, gradient 0, so pi over 2, gradient 0. So the graph will be there. Another one as well, 3 pi over 2. We can see that the gradient for the curve is 0 at that point. So if we draw our gradient graph at 3 pi over 2, you know, the gradient will also be 0. Um, let's consider this point over here. So when x equals 0, we've clearly got a positive gradient. And then the gradient becomes less positive, the gradient becomes less positive, and the gradient becomes 0. Okay, so if we think about our gradient curve, what that's doing, it actually starts with a gradient of 1 and then curves down as the gradient reduces and then the gradient becomes 0. After pi over 2, look what happens to the gradient. The gradient becomes negative. So we're thinking about our gradient graph after pi over 2. The gradient is going to become negative. And we actually get something from the earlier video. That point there is a point of inflection. Okay, so at that point there, a pi, see that the gradient is negative, the gradient is negative, the gradient is negative. That's like the maximum negative, if that's a weird thing to say, but that's the most negative that the gradient gets at pi. When we go past pi, the gradient is still negative but it's becoming less negative and then as we get to 3 pi over 2 the gradient's back to zero okay so we get this shape and then as we pass past 3 pi over 2 you see the gradient's positive again and then we as we get to part 2 pi the gradient is its maximum value okay i should have said earlier on by the way at pi the gradient was the minimum value and then we go past the point of inflection um, look familiar? So, not the best drawing, but that curve there, we can see that if we differentiate sine x, this graph tells me the gradient. We know that 2r by the x would equal cos x. Next one, let's look at the exponential function. Okay, so the exponential graph, we know approaches a very steep gradient as x increases and we should also know that as x gets small the exponential gets uh, sorry as x approaches minus infinity the exponential becomes very small so we've got an asymptote which is our x-axis okay now i want to think about gradient for the curve think about the gradient for this curve would be agreed that the gradient is always positive but as we go this way, as x approaches infinity, the gradient gets more and more steep, doesn't it? And as we approach minus infinity, that gradient there is approaching zero. Because it never actually quite flattens out, but it's approaching zero as we go this way. Okay, let's look at points. So if x equals zero, we know y equals e to the zero, which is one. And if you look at the gradient for that point, think about the tangent. At that point there, the gradient is also equal to 1. Okay, let's try another point. x equals 1. Our curve has clearly got steeper gradient now hasn't it 
y is equal to e to the power 1, which is roughly 2.718. The gradient is also at that point. 2.718. Okay. So actually this curve, I mean the, the main reason why we care so much about it in A-level maths is it's got this really important, pro, important property that when we differentiate it, It stays the same. Right, essentially every point along this curve, the y value is the same as the gradient. And we could try a few more, but you know, look at this, the y value gets smaller as we go this way, the gradient also gets smaller. The y values never quite get to zero, the gradient never quite gets to zero. The y values approach infinity, the gradient also approaches infinity. Okay, so so far we know that when we've got sine x, we can differentiate to get cos x. Similarly, if you want to have a go, you can draw the cos graph. If you differentiate cos, you would get minus sine. And there's a really useful little wheel that we can see that helps us to differentiate. If we differentiate sine, we get cos. If we differentiate cos, we get minus sine. Minus sine goes to minus cos, and minus cos goes back to sine. And then obviously if you differentiate four times, you're back where you start. So that forms a cycle. Okay, um, And obviously for e to the x, we know if we differentiate it, we still get e to the x, okay? So what we're going to look at in this section, we're going to look at like how to differentiate, not just sine x, not just cos x, it might be like sine 3x or sine of x cubed or e to the power sine x even, okay? And um, before I can show you these shortcuts, I'm going to just quickly sort of do a little proof this so we can see where they come from. But then after we've proved this, most of the examples that we do, we can just use the shortcuts for, okay? So there's a technique which is called the chain rule. And that basically tells us that dy by dx will equal dy by du multiplied by du by dx. And you see that we can treat these derivatives as almost like fractions. So that fraction there would be the same as these two multiplied together. Okay? So say for example, if I had sine of a function of x, what we've got there, we've got like a function inside another function. Okay, so we can use a substitution. We can say, all right, well, let's let, let u equal f of x and then if we could differentiate this that would give me du by dx which would just be well if I'm differentiating this side with respect to x let's differentiate this side with respect to x now obviously because I'm replacing this function just like a general function inside sine with the letter u we could say well, all right, well y would equal sine of u Okay. Now look on the side, we know that when y equals sine of x, if we differentiate with respect to x, we get cos x. No difference here with what I've got, but instead of a, an x, I've got a u. Okay. So if I was going to differentiate this, I wouldn't be finding dy by the x, I would be finding dy by du, because I've got to differentiate with respect to u, because this is a function of u. Okay. Well, I know if y equals sine x, dy by dx equals cos x. So if y equals sine u, dy by du must equal cos u. Okay. So what we're going to get now is a general rule to differentiate sine of any function, not just sine of x. Okay. So if I wanted to find dy by dx, that would equal dy by du multiplied by u by dx, so we can say, well, in general, dy by dx must, e must, must equal 
You are but you, which is cause you. Times by you by the x, which is f dash of x. So we'll just finish this off by saying cos of u is, well, we could write it instead. We want the look at the original question. The original question was y as a function of x. My answer has still got a u in. Okay. Now we've just introduced u just because it, it, by introducing this new substitution u, it made us be able to differentiate these two things which we knew about. Okay. But my final answer, I need to replace this u. Okay, because the question said, well if y equals sine of a function of x, what does dy by dx equal? So my final answer needs to be a function of x. Okay. So I'm gonna write it as f dash times by cos of u and u is just f of x. Okay. So there are loads of different shortcuts for differentiating sine, cos, e to the x, and some other functions which we'll look at in a second. Um, maybe I won't show you all of them because it'll take too long. So if you want now, pause the video and see if you can get a similar rule for cos and a similar rule, similar rule for e to the e to any function of x. So if I said well, y is equal to e of a general function, what would the derivative for that look like? Okay, have a go with that. Okay, so here are the shortcuts that we're going to be using, which are in the booklet. Okay, um, maybe you had a go for cos. It's very similar. Cos differentiates to minus sine, and you multiply the front by f dash, just from using the chain rule. Okay, for the exponential, whatever that function is in the power, we just multiply the front by the derivative, again from the chain rule. One that you probably won't have tried, which was the ln function. Uh, I'm not going to go through the explanation of why that happens, let's just use the shortcut for now. Okay, so let's try a few quick examples. Um, so if I said differentiate, the notation we use to differentiate is d by dx. So if I ever write d by dx with something inside, it's just an instruction to differentiate what's inside with respect to x. Okay, so if I must differentiate cos of 4x, then using this rule, we can see that our f of x here is just 4x, okay? So we have to multiply the front by the derivative. So if I differentiate what's inside, if I differentiate 4x, I'd get 4, okay? Also, cos differentiates to minus. So I'm doing two things. I'm putting a negative in front. The derivative of 4x is 4, and then cos differentiates to sine of whatever that function was, and this function is just 4x. So we can sort of summarise it in two ways, like I just think about it as the angle stays the same. Whenever you're differentiating a trig function, do not do anything to that angle inside. Okay, if it's cos of 4x, it stays as a 4x afterwards. All that we are doing is differentiating cos, which goes to minus sine, and the function inside, which is 4x, we have to differentiate that, which is what that f dash means and the derivative of 4x is 4. Okay, next one. If I want to differentiate e to the power of 1 minus 2x. Okay, so for an exponential, it's slightly different. The power stays the same. Okay, so look, whatever that e to the power of, I know when you differentiate polynomials, you times by the power and you take one off the power. Do not start doing that with exponentials, okay? The power stays the same. So it would be one minus two x. Do not change that, okay? For trigonometry, the angle stays the same. For exponentials, the power stays the same. Then you look at what your power is, which is one minus two x. Now, if I differentiate one minus two x, I'd get minus two. So all we have to do is multiply the front by the derivative. And that's our answer. Okay, so one more. So we want to differentiate ln of, let's go for x squared plus 1. This one is the, the, the one that takes the longest to get used to. Because like, 
when you differentiate a log function, it actually turns into a fraction. Okay, we will do a lot of this this year, especially when we integrate, because we can integrate and we can go back the other way. Um, but for now, just stay with me, okay, and try a few of these. So if I differentiate a log function, I know it's actually going to become a fraction. Okay, so that f of x inside my log function is x squared plus 1. If you notice, we get f of x on the bottom. On the top of my fraction, I get f dash. So if I differentiate this function inside, not the whole thing, just the function inside. Don't forget, this is a function inside another function. So if I differentiate what's inside, I get 2x. So that would be my answer. Okay, so let's look at example 3 from the booklet. Um, first of all, we want to differentiate y equals sine 2x. So we can use the shortcut. We know that sine differentiates to cos. The function inside is 2x. So that's not going to change. Okay, we're going to get cos of 2x. But what we do have to multiply the front by is the derivative of what's inside. So if I differentiate what's inside, if I differentiate 2x, I get 2. So the answer would be 2 cos 2x. Next one. If I'm going to differentiate an exponential, the power stays the same. So I always start by writing, well, right, that's going to stay the same. And then I look at my power and I differentiate this and I get 3. So I multiply the front by 3. Okay, I've actually changed um, 3c because I've just realised I actually randomly did that one when I was making some up before. So it was ln of x squared plus 1. I'm going to change this to ln of sine x. Okay. You might want to supplement this with a bit of like extra working out because this one is a bit of an awkward one. The, the f of x in our notation in this case is sine x. So f dash of x is cosine of x. Okay, so if we apply the rule, we'd get dy by dx is the function f of x goes on the bottom, so sine x. And the derivative goes on top, which is cos. We could actually also write that as cos x, but we haven't seen that yet. We'll see that in a few weeks. Okay, cos is 1 over tan. We know that sine over cos is tan. Cos over sine is something called cos. Okay, next one. This is a bit of a challenging one because we've got an exponential function with the trig function inside, with a function inside that as well. I, unless you're feeling confident, I wouldn't do this all in one go. Okay, so let's start by looking at our function. So this function is inside our exponential function, which is cos 3x. Now the derivative of that, we can apply this shortcut for. So we know if we differentiate cos, it goes to minus sine. The angle stays the same. And if we look at the angle, which is 3x, if I differentiate that, I get 3 so I'll multiply the front by 3. Okay. So then do I by the x will equal that 2 there, by the way. Don't even worry about that. Like if you're differentiating 2 times by something, it the answer is just going to be 2 times by the answer. Like I'm not really even worried about that 2. I'm just actually differentiating the function, which is the exponential. Okay. So the rule for the exponential is the power stays the same. And we multiply the front by the derivative of the power. So that would be minus 3 sine 3x. So let's just tidy this up. If you multiply these two together, we get minus 6 sine 3x. E to the power cos 3x. Okay. Um, have a go at the exercise which follows on from example 3. So exercise 2. Try those questions and use the wet solutions on Connect if you need any help.